What's up, Mortgage Coach Community? Dave Savage coming to you live, broadcasting out of Lake Oswego Mortgage Coach. I've been on the road a lot lately, but I'm uh, sitting down with my buddy, Michael Harrington. What's up, brother? How's it going, Dave? It's going good. Uh, you're coming live out of Houston, right? Yeah, yeah, a little stormy down here today, but uh, all together, the weather's been nice these last couple of days. Good, good. Well, yeah, the weather is gorgeous here. I, I've been in Northern California for about a little over a week, and God, it was gorgeous down there. But wow. I think we're getting to that time of year where it's pretty nice everywhere. Yeah. Well, I lived in Northern, Northern California. I love it when people say Northern California, they're usually referring to like Sacramento. I'm like, well, try like Siskiyou Valley up in Mount Shasta. That's North. <laughs> so. so I, so I drove through Shasta and I was actually in Anderson Valley, which is Mendocino County. Yeah. But I, I actually cut in. I didn't know that you were from those parts. I, I, I have my, my uh, freshman year. I started out and, and uh, you know, there's a town there called Weed, California, which is ironic because they grow a lot of it there now. But uh <laughs> I lived in Weed, California, which is right on the cusp of Mount Shasta. And our uh, high school, we actually, the bus would have to go all the way up the mountain to the high school. So it was pretty interesting. So I, I have fly fished up in that area. Like it's just some of the best fishing in the country and love McLeod. The McLeod River is a, yeah. a regular stop of mine. I miss it. I miss it a lot. It's beautiful up there. Yeah, it sure is. Well, I know you've got a cool idea. I was talking to my buddy, Jonathan Roach, who is also your coach. Yep. And, and he said the way that you have built this top 20 realtor list is something that the mortgage coach community has to know about. Uh, you're, you've been a big, you know, a red belt at mortgage coach for a long time. So I'm fired up to interview you for the community. Sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about your market and then tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Well, that's a great question there because uh, the Houston market um, it's starting to look a lot like the Austin and Dallas markets, uh, which I'm sure you've heard how hot those markets are. There's sometimes 20, 30 offers on one house because there's literally less listings uh, than there are agents in those locations. Uh, Houston, I feel, is not at the same level in regards to multiple offers or you know $100,000 over list price uh, being offered on houses here. So, But it's still a very hot market. I'm in the Katy area, which is West Houston, and it's still very, very hot here. Um, we're seeing about maybe five to 10 offers on most homes that are in the 300 to 700 range, but there's even multiple offers on the million dollar houses out here as well. Are you, are you seeing appraisal gaps? Is that a very common occurrence or is it more just the fear of an appraisal gap? No, no. I dealt with one just in the last three days. Um, luckily the seller actually came down. Uh, this house was located in the Heights, which is really close to downtown area. The weird thing about Houston is the downtown area is not as hot as the suburbs, which is just really strange. So the well, multiple it's offers. COVID. I mean, I don't think that's that strange in COVID yeah. times. Yeah. So the seller came down on this house. I think if that house had been out in Katy or in a suburb and it was $25,000 short, I think the buyer would have to make up for the difference and, or sign the appraisal waiver form that we're seeing here in Texas. So it, it, we're seeing a lot of people use mortgage coach and they're either doing a single premium MI or they're yeah. using some form of MI to kind of offset the down payment impact and the payment impact. Well, one of the things I want to show you today is uh, I did a um, three side-by-sides for houses for renovation. So what we're seeing some buyers do is just get creative with houses that are sitting on the market and just get more creative with their mindset of what if I renovate this house and put 75 in this versus this house that's already renovated. So that's what I've been using Mortgage Coach today for was to show a, a renovation versus a non-renovation property. Oh, well, let's, let's save that for a closing idea. Uh, I think the, the, the big idea I want to hear what you're doing is just how you're coming up with a list of, you know, who are your top 20 realtors. I think it's never been more important with who you're working for. Yeah. And as, as a modern mortgage professional, you want to be thoughtful, you want to be targeted. So what do you, what are you doing? Well, the, the way I think about real estate is we should have a sniper rifle and not a shotgun theory when we're going out there, going after real estate agents. And so, um, I targeted when I first got down here in Houston and had left Dallas, instead of just going after the masses and having 40 or 50 coffee meetings and trying to figure out, you know, what one to $5 million people I can meet with, I thought, well, why not go big or go home? So I started going after some top agents, um, mostly actually out of the listing side of my buyer transactions. So by showing up to every single closing, I was meeting the listing agents. And if you look at my top, my top 10 of my top 20 right now, eight of those top 10 agents were actually listing agents on my buyer's transactions. So the first step would be to really pay attention to who those listing agents are on your transactions. And, the, and right now during a multiple offer scenario, 
having even access or having a relationship, even if you're not getting business from those top listing agents, in today's market of having multiple offers, being a good reputable lender is actually just as important as a good offer on the table. Uh, yesterday, we won a, we actually won a $1.1 million transaction. I don't even know who the listing agent is, but there was two offers on the table. The listing agent specifically told the buyer and the buyer's agent, I actually know your lender. I feel We actually feel more comfortable with your lender than the other transaction. Numbers were pretty much the same. So we're going with your offer. And so the client actually called me and said, hey, this listing agent, I don't know who you are, Mike, but they knew exactly who you were. And they wanted to go with this offer because your, your deal was on the table. I hadn't even called the agent, which I usually do that call. I just didn't know the buyer's agent and she didn't know I do this warm, fuzzy phone call, which we'll talk later about. But I was surprised that that had happened on a million dollar transaction. But again, by going after and talking to those listing agents that are on your buyer's transactions and targeting the ones that do a certain amount of buyer transactions, let's say they do 10 million plus in transactions for buyer side. And, you, and most people have access to that type of information online through their company or through some sort of resource where they can find out who the top agents in the area. Here, here in Houston, we've got Houston Business Journal. Most cities have a business journal that you can actually look up like the, the list, the list as they call it. And it's usually the top list of whoever did the most transactions, whether it's buyers, listings, units, dollar volume. We'll go after the top 10, go after the top 20. Um, my average agent in my top 20 has been with me 9.4 years. So the, the length of time is also important, making sure you keep your agents happy. But in, in regards to creating the list, I would say going after those listing agents that are on your buyer's transactions first would be a good start. So if you have a top listing uh, team, so I go after teams. So let's say it's a team of 10 or 10 people or less, which is usually the best uh, teams to go after in the beginning. If you go after those teams, Find out, you know, what their what the the lead guy's birthday is. Find out, um, you know, his favorite coffee shop. Find out. I mean, try to do your best of just keep knocking on that door. My marketing person, she keeps knocking on four particular doors to this very day to try and get us in. With one of my top listing agents or top buyers agents, I should say, uh, Joe. I knocked on his door for three years. I found out one of his best friends from Dallas, and I found out that I happen to know the same guy. I had him call for me. To Joe and then introduce us through a warm introduction to finally get a sit down with Joe. And I still worked with, I've been working with Joe for almost 11 years now. And he's one of the top agents at KW Memorial. And I wouldn't have that relationship if, if it wasn't for the relationship that I knew he had, that I also had, where it was a joint relationship. I had him do the warm introduction for that. Now, in regards to like, how do we keep these agents happy? Like, obviously, you know, keeping, so time, go ahead. time out, because I want to break some of this stuff down. I want to make sure everybody's getting it. So first of all, you're being very precise about targeting 20 agents and having your best list. Like you might have 50 or a hundred realtors that you're targeting, but you're, you're, we're talking about a top 20 list, right? Right. And then you're, I use MMI and I, there's a lot of different platforms now. So you can do your research. You're targeting teams of 10 or less. Right. So to be in your top 20, it's a team. You're right. not targeting um, up and comers. It's, it's a team. Is there a minimum amount of units that you want to make sure that they've done? Yeah. The, so the tricky thing in Houston is some of these top teams do a lot of new construction. So sometimes the numbers that you see on the board might not be real true numbers because they might do a lot of large builders do free trans, like free listings for those builders, et cetera. So you have to really know uh, the team dynamic, but I would say honestly, probably anywhere from 25 to 50 transactions a year on the buyer side is what we usually target. Okay. And, and guys, we have a nice little audience in Facebook right now watching this. If you have some of criteria that would meet your top 20, and we want to know what is your criteria. And then, and then you're finding out like, who are the names of all the different people you're putting that in your database. Yeah. Is there any other important criteria? Are you making sure that like they're using social media or yeah. they're using video? Because I just think like knowing that you're a video centric modern mortgage professional, if it was a team, they respected social, they respected video, right. they're going to be more attracted to you. Is there any other criteria like that you're using? Well, I mean, like in regards to what we do personally, uh, we, you know, I have a videography company and a videography company actually provides some, some at cost um, level for videography for top listing agents for their luxury real estate. It's just, it's another notch in the belt when I actually have that sit down meeting with that top real estate agent or 
meeting with even a few of their, their top um, buyers agents. So if you're trying to get entry into some of these top agents, like the, the top echelon, sometimes going after their buyers agents would be a good way of actually kind of sneaking your way in by working with some of the top, uh, their, their top echelon uh, buyers agents as well. So that way you can try and kind of sneak your way into a meeting. Uh, tomorrow morning, I have a meeting with a team. Uh, I'm the one that provides the, like the mortgage update. I'll be doing that at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And again, by going in at the level of the of the buyer's agents is how I got to the top of the food chain by working with the uh, broker for that office. And so I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't started working with the agents first and then just slowly work my way up that chain. Uh, now I've been working with uh, Bob now for I think almost uh, 13 years. So, and, so, and so, so for the checklist guys, 20 teams, who are the buyer's agent? Who is the listing agent? Go after both of them with targeted messages. And, so sorry, sorry for cutting you off there. I just yeah, wanted no, to break great. that down into a playbook for everyone. And if if you have questions for Michael, let us know what they are. Um, keep keep going with unpacking so, this. So the one big thing that I think Jonathan had mentioned to you, which was the aha moment for him, is you go into some of these teams and they say things like, "We're just going, we'll, we'll be happy to add you to our list," and I I stop them and I say, "Look." Um, we gave $7.2 million in business in regards to referrals back to our agents last year. If I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't refer my, I didn't refer three agents to every single one of my referrals. I literally told them specifically who I thought the best agent for them was because I'm not required to refer three or four or 10 real estate agents for them to go meet with. I said, so here's the thing. I partner with you as a realtor. I don't, I don't, I don't become a, I'm not a list guy. I'm just not, I, I, I explained to the, um, to the real estate agent, I'm the guy that you're going to want to partner with because we're going to be the ones doing events together. We're the ones that are going to be like at the hips together at the broker open houses. I want to be your partner. I really don't want to be some vendor on a, on a list and either they're going to accept that. And I just did a meeting with the realtor in Austin uh, last week and she was blown away at the presentation. And she, she's already sent me some business. She's a top real estate agent there. I, I cut her short when she said, well, I can add you to the list. And when I, when I cut her short, I was nice about it. But I just said, look, you know, the introduction that Brandon gave me to meet with you was because you needed a partner. You were not looking for another vendor for your list. You were looking for someone to partner with you on your nonprofit organization, to partner with you on your, on your, your, your team, making sure that you know, the dynamics between you and lending is just lockstep. I said, you want somebody that's going to be with you for 10 years, 20 years. I'm that guy. I can show you a list of people I've been with for 10 years. I'd love to see you work your way up my top 20 into my top 10. And ironically enough, the people that are on my top 10 are appreciative that they're in my top 10 because there's a certain amount of dynamics that we do with our top 10 versus our top 20, like the, the bottom half of the top 20. And I'm very honest with the teams. I'm like, here's where you sit this past year in business with us. I want to see you hit our top 10. And believe it or not, they want to be in my top 10. So when you make it kind of almost like a scarcity issue, ironically enough, they jump on that bandwagon. They're not going to negate that and say, well, who do you think you are? Well, I, I have a list of top 10. I'll show you their numbers. I'd like to see you get into that list. I, I love that. And it does remind me just for some other resources for every folks. Uh, when we did Scriptapalooza this year, two of the speakers wanted to talk about their scripting for how they don't get on the list. How like, don't give one, don't give three cards, give one card. And so I'm gonna put a link down below. We have what we call taking action notes. And so in the notes down below, not only will you see scripts around this, but there'll be links to those interview, but both Shayla Gifford and Cody Touche. It, now they're not using your strategy. Right. So it's, it's another idea, right. but just another resource to anyone listening to this. Uh, on on how you can educate realtors that you don't want to be on the list of one of three lenders. You want to be the lender. And uh, I love that. Yeah. Well, and I've listened to um, some of the top core CDs. And of course, Shayla has been with the core for quite some time. And I've listened to a lot of her material um, and uh, their scripts are amazing. So yeah, no, they're, they're solid gold. Yeah. So, so what, what does, because again, we're on the mortgage coach. You're talking to the whole channel. We're talking about, Hey, one, how to create your top 20 and then two, how to optimize your top 20. And so I think we covered criteria to create it. Right. I think 
your strategy is your, now you said top 10 and top 20. Do you have a top 10 list and a top 20 list? It's or is a, it kind of depends on who you're talking to? It's a top 10 of the top 20. So we do have a top 20 that the, the services that we provide to the top 20 on our, t- on our list is a little bit more exceptional than obviously our top 40. There's a realtor top 40 that I used to, I was in the core at one point. It was that it was kind of like a realtor top 40 list for them. I still call it that on my Google sheet, but then I have a top 20 and then we have a top 10. And Got so, it. um, and it's just different services provided for, for those levels. And we actually make, I mean, it's a written down system and a written down list. One of the things that we do with the top 10 is quarterly meetings with more in my, my actual, like mar- we do a marketing session that we do specifically with my marketing person where she's on the call or she's in the meeting. So like Lauren's coming tomorrow from the woodlands down from the woodlands to Katie to have like, to sit in with this meeting. And we're going to be offering suggestions and ideas from a marketing standpoint. And she's a marketing freaking guru. So um, I just let her sit in on the meetings. She takes notes and then we come up with the ideas. The important thing, and I'm not sure if everyone else has experienced this in mortgage coach, where you sit down with a realtor, like the, the masterminding is going on, all the ideas are flowing and then the implementation and actually like follow through doesn't happen. So the reason I hired Lauren is to make sure all of it happens. Like I want every idea that is on our top five list of things to do together that actually it gets implemented, whether it's videography or if it's um, doing these joint session uh, virtual um, uh, things for the, like almost like quarterly things with their clients, uh, whether it's a virtual event, um, it could be a cocktail party, uh, it could be a real party, um, doing things that makes their clients feel like they're constantly being touched by, by the real estate agents to make sure that the referrals are flowing in and they're not having to go to lead sources like Zillow and Zerple and Purple and all those other ones. So. Cool. How, how do you um, integrate a mortgage coach value prop? The fact that you're a mortgage coach into your agent relationships, like what is the, the agent value prop around being a mortgage coach? Well, the big one for me is, is usually presenting. I, I did this presentation on sales mastery, but I basically would present, you know, the differences between us and two of the top online lenders. And I use Quicken as an example, just because their pricing is just right off their website. It's easy to take clients there. But then I'll actually do what's called a side-by-side total cost analysis between my numbers and the other lenders. And so what I do with the real estate agents, because a lot of times they come to us and they're like, well, the buyer chose to use with their credit union, blah, blah, blah. And so what my agents are trained to say is Michael's got a really cool system. I don't make them say total cost analysis or all the fancy words, just a really cool system that shows his numbers against the other lenders. And the cool thing about Michael is if, if, if there's a better opportunity with the other lender and not him, he'll be up front. He'll be like the guy from, you know, Miracle on 34th Street, where he says, go across the street to Macy's or whatever. So I, I said it just two nights ago. There was a two and three quarters rate on the table from Bank of America of all places. And it was better than their online rates. And I just told the client, look, I can't beat that. Not with no point, not with any points. I mean, I said, I don't know how they're getting it for you, but if the loan officer gives you his cell phone number, he's willing to actually talk to you directly and you don't have to dial a nine digit extension number, good for you. I actually said that to the client that got back to the agent. This is actually one of the newer agents I met with in Austin. She was so impressed that I actually sent the business across the street that the agent was like, the agent was impressed, the client was impressed, but the agent was very glad that I was bold. I was, at, I was very honest with the client. I used the mortgage cost, the total cost analysis to show the differences. And I said, the other one's better. I can't beat that. And if you're getting as good service, which is unusual for Bank of America, but if you've got good service from a particular loan officer there, God bless you. Love it. So you're using the system to help you make the most informed decision. And then I'm hearing in today's market, you know, that mortgage coach is being used more than ever to just get buyers off the fence and into escrow or helping them make a more confident offer. Because like in this market, you need to make, you need to understand, hey, what are my mortgage options? And then you also need to understand what is buying this home worth to me in three and five years? Are you using it to help um, families make winning offers? Only like what we're doing with the appreciation factor that is in there is showing them like what your suggestion was a couple uh, series back in regards to telling people, look, if, if, if property is actually appraising higher, a year from now, let's say it's 12, 13% in the, in the Austin area, which is going to be a truth because that's how much they're selling for uh, in regards to overpriced. Now, the appraisals aren't mapping up yet, but they will, right? As the sales go through, 
for 100,000, 125, 150,000 over list price. As those things keep going through, those appraisals will be coming in. And the thing that they're trying to analyze is, do I still try and buy now or do I wait? They use the word wait. And so I say, well, let's look at this. And I actually show them what would happen if the price increased to $100,000 between now and a year from now. And they had to pay that on a mortgage versus like, and I'm talking about Houston, where we're about 15 to 25,000. So if we start mapping up like Austin, because I've had two clients that said they tried to buy in Austin, they're coming from Cali, they tried to buy in Austin, they couldn't buy in Austin, they tried to buy in Dallas, couldn't buy in Dallas. And then we were like the, you know, the stepchild. <laughs> they're like, well, I finally decided to move to Houston. <laughs> so I guess they didn't like the humidity part. But anyways, uh, no one says I'm moving to Houston because I, you know, I, I love something usually, but you know, Houston's a great place to work. Let's put it that way. Um, but they finally moved to Houston. Well, the thing is, if they wait for Houston, if we're at 15 to 25 and they've already seen this other stuff raise so fast, I'm like, it's almost like Bitcoin. Like you wanted to get in at a certain price, right? At five cents. And now it's at 53,000, 63,000. And I'm, I was saying the same thing yesterday about doggy coin. I asked my financial planner yesterday, I was like, should we put some money on that doggy coin, man? And he's like, no, 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 no. And I told my wife, I'm like, I'm feeling really good about this. And then today it's up 35% in one day. That's kind of what's happening with Houston, but not yet. It's starting to happen. It's start, we're starting to see a, a compression here in Houston and obviously other areas, even like Oregon and California is still dealing with a lot of uh, lack of inventory. People are afraid to sell because they can't buy local. But when they're selling over there and they're coming here, it's a different story. Or if they're selling here and they're moving out of state, it's a whole other story as well. So I just try and use the, the appreciation factors that you guys have in there. The construction button's great too for showing like one-time closes or if they're going to do any type of construction costs as well. Well, it's always always good to just future cast for the family. And we call that the buy now or buy later or cost right. awaiting analysis. Yeah. So let's let's also make sure we weave in some of what you, you learn from Jonathan, because I know one thing for sure. There's the facts and the data, mm -hmm. but then there's your vibe and your energy and how you're showing up. Right. And I think that is super important in today's market, both with realtors and uh, when it comes to helping families get comfortable and confident to make winning offers. Um, yeah. what, what, do, what is your engagement with Jonathan and why are you coaching with Jonathan? Well, I, I get, I mean, it depends on how many people remember me going on stage at Sales Mastery, mostly because of Jonathan, I was on stage twice. And then of course, it, for business purposes, I was on the following year after that, but I had lost 60 pounds uh, using Jonathan's program. This is before I was actually trained by him personally. And then what happened during COVID year, <laughs> I, it wasn't COVID-19, it was more like COVID-35 for me. And so, uh, and again, guilty as charged, I was eating whatever I wanted. I, you know, like felt bad for myself. Uh, dealing with all the code. I just, I hated COVID anyways. Um, so I gained weight and then I realized uh, to, to lose it faster than, than the time I did it, that, well, that I lost that weight in like six months. I wanted to lose this quicker. So I told Jonathan, I'm like, starting in January, I'm like, I want to do it. I want to like lose weight. Um, I've lost right at 20 pounds right now. So I'm actually better on track with him coaching me weekly than I was when I was doing it on my own, just, you know, going online and, and using the program online. But, uh, being a lot more diligent, just being diligent about working out at the same time every day, starting work at the same time every day. It's just more about diligence, but also about balance. The thing about Jonathan is he, he wants to make sure that it's not just his list of things like, you know, drink enough water, you know, he, you know, eat the right portion amount. It's also about like making your own list of the things that you want to achieve at the highest level. So I don't know if I, if I hadn't been with Jonathan, I don't know I'd be, if I'd be flying again. I had taken kind of a hiatus from flying airplanes and now I'm back into flying. And I don't think I would have done that without his encouragement. Um, I don't think I'd be back in front of you again without his encouragement. So it's just, it's like uh, I told him all the things I wanted to accomplish again. And then he's just uh, helped me uh, put all those things into place by making sure each week that I'm, I'm holding myself accountable. He, he uses a number scale. He, the great thing about mortgage people is we're all about numbers. So that he has this like one to three level for each of these things. And he's like, if you're not hitting three, if you're not hitting that energy level of five, um, then you're not, you're, not, you're not hitting on all cylinders. And so I made my list and I challenged myself. And uh, this past week I was, I was, I think at 74 out of 81, which was a really good score to have, so. I like it. So he's, yeah. he's gamified it. A combination of the best practices that he knows that champions do to get to level five. And then you get to also create your own score. And then it sounds like he's just helping hold you accountable to, to doing your best. 
Yeah, so absolutely. I know another thing that Jonathan's really passionate about, and he's been bringing into the mortgage coach community a lot, is text video. Are you uh, using text video a lot? Yeah. So uh, the funny thing is, I when he did that at the beginning of the year, I went ahead and encouraged all my realtors that were not big on video. Because, uh, you know, I always try it when I do videography with my real estate agents, I have a certain level of entry points like me and you are looking at each other in the face right now. And I'm looking at the camera. I'm comfortable looking at the camera. You've done this for so long. You're, you're comfortable with looking at the camera. The tendency is people look down at the image when, or they're themselves when they're talking instead of looking right at the camera. And so getting people comfortable with the camera, I said, look, if you can get comfortable with your phone by just sending text messages to your family and your friends, I'm like, just send text messages. So eight people took me up on eight people out of the top you know, 40 list that we had called took me up and actually started texting. I said, don't you dare text me text. I want you to text me video. So I took his idea and kind of pushed it onto my realtors. And I said, hey, this idea came from Jonathan. So, cause he, he called me, he had a big old puff of hair. He hadn't gotten a haircut. And he was just like, hey, Michael, we're gonna get started. I was just like, is that Jonathan? I'm like, I'm not used to seeing him without a baseball cap. So <laughs> it was it was kind of cool to see him in his raw uh, effort of uh, trying to do that, that texting uh, text video. Um, and he started off that way. He's kind of, he, I'm going to tell you, he's slouched. I'm going to have to get him back onto it because he's texted me with actual fingers lately. So I need to make sure he says, yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. I think the combination, I think video sometimes words, sometimes the audio message, sometimes, you know, just multi-channel communication, but using all the tools that we have guys, yeah. uh, that's what fun. modern mortgage, modern real estate professionals do. They, they show up at level five energy. Uh, I interviewed a gentleman today who was uh, formerly the chief marketing officer for Hyatt Hotels. Wow. He's he's lived in nine countries. Uh, he was with Hyatt for over 30 years. I mean, really, a really special human being. And and what, the thing he's most proud of is, is how he turned empathy into a competitive advantage at Hyatt and scaled it and operationalized it and just the little things. And, you know, as modern mortgage professionals, we need to, we need to elevate our empathy. We need to elevate how we use technology. So let's, let's go into wrap up mode on this top 20. Okay. So I think we, we pretty much answered a lot of questions on how to target criteria to target. Right. Um, you're creating a standard that if you're going to be in my top 10, you're, you're not going to give out three cards and you're giving them a reason yeah. you're giving them a script. Uh, what, what else haven't we covered? What else do you want to unpack as part of this checklist of how to build and how to manage a top would, 10 or top 20? I would say maintenance. Um, you know, the, the thing about um, managing a top 10, top 20, top 40 list is if you don't have a really good solid system of staying in contact, paying attention to the holidays, paying attention to mother's day coming up, father's day coming up, like you need to be real, like it needs to not be transactional with your, with your top 20. It needs to feel like more like a relationship, just like you would with your family. And so if you start treating them like family. I'm not talking about the bad part of treating your family. I'm talking about like treating them like, like you'd want to be treated from them. Then they're going to not even talk about the word partnership. Those words are not going to keep coming up. It's just going to feel that way. And you're not going to have to discuss it any longer. There's people that I, I talk with daily that are in the, like, literally, I've got three of the top 10 real estate teams from HBJ Magazine that I talk to almost daily, but we don't talk just all shop. I mean, it, it, it's at a point where it's relationships. When someone's sick, you know, I'm sending them soup from um, from HEB or something. I'm, I'm making sure that I would treat them like my family. I'm not just, I'm not just taking them to lunch or taking, it's not about taking people to lunch and dinner. Quite frankly, your top producers, they don't want that. They really don't. They don't want to be treated to dinner. They don't want to be treated to lunch. That is like a sub-level real estate agent or a sub-level insurance agent thing. Like you need to take this to a whole other level, which is not lunch and dinner. It's like, you know, when you send them a referral, like an approved buyer that's already pre-approved and they're looking in that specific area of town, that's that's a that's a great give. I'm not I'm not saying that it has to be, you know, 25. The whole thing about RESPA and Section 8. It's like it's a referral of business that it doesn't get interpreted that way or referrals uh, or referrals of, of good uh, vendors for their list. Like when they need a good roofer, when they need a good something like the fact that they come to you as the reference point because you they know you've got the answers. 
I get calls all the time from real estate agents that are asking me questions about a completely different deal that they didn't have any control over, relocation, another lender deal. The thing is, they call me for the questions. They don't call any, anybody else on a list. They just call me. So when you're that resource for that real estate agent for everything, whether it's referral, like where, where would you take your wife to dinner, Michael? I get that question all the time. Like they know that I'm the guy that's on a foodie. So they come to me for stuff like that. That's, that's how leveled you want to get with your real estate teams is where you've got that kind of contact with them. And they feel like, they feel like if your letters attached to that deal, that's what might put you over on a multiple, multiple offer deal is because your letter is attached to that deal, not Wells Fargo, Chase, and all these other big bank people. I love it. So you you are a resource. So by the way, I'm going to be in Austin next week. Any dinner recommendations? Like if you're in Austin, you have to go here. Or do you just know Houston? You don't know Austin? No, no, no. I know Austin. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send it to you here. In a, I'll, I'll uh, text it to you, man. I've got, right. I've got two specific recommendations. for You got to tell me where you're at in, uh, in Austin, though, because... Uh, just Well, I'm... Just downtown. consider me downtown. I'm downtown. I'm going to be out of town um, for a few days okay. uh, at a mastermind, but I'm going to be downtown one night. So okay. let me know. Well, if, you, if you, next time you stay there, I have the the perfect hotel to stay at. Which... Well, let me let me know that too because okay. I haven't okay. booked my hotel yet. All right. Okay. I will. It, and All right. It's a perfect recommendation. You're gonna love it. Okay. Good. So so guys, hopefully you got value from this. Be a mortgage coach. Be a resource to families. When it comes to your agents, make sure you have a targeted 20. Make sure you have very specific things that you're doing with your top 10. Uh, recommend all your primary um, referral partners. They're not giving out three cards. Uh, listen to some of Michael's scripting. Check out the link to Scriptapalooza. You can hear Shayla's scripting. You can hear Cody Touche's scripting on that. I think I've interviewed a lot. I think Jeremy Forcia. I've interviewed a lot of people on how to, how to be the one loan officer that gets the referrals. Uh, Michael, any closing thoughts or any, uh, you know, things you want to make sure everybody hears before we wrap it up? Sure. I just want to add to the multiple offer because you, you've done a couple sessions on multiple offers and I, I wish I, I had kind of put my two cents in on one of them, but um, I call it the warm fuzzy phone call where you call the listing agent as soon as the offer goes over and it goes something like this. There's a promulgated form for the state of Texas that only says they're approved and We've you know, gotten their income, their assets. But what I'm going to tell you is a little bit more information about the buyer. And then you go into more information about the buyer that legally you can disclose. And then you say something like this. Look, I know you don't know, you might not know who guaranteed rate is. We're the number one purchase lender in the nation. But here, let me tell you about my team. The Harrington team, we're one of the top rated on Google and on Yelp in West Houston. Five-star ranked. We got more than 70 reviews. I, you know, I want to make sure you and your seller have access to that. So I'm going to send you a link. I'm also going to send you a link to the fact that we were voted number one mortgage team in Houston. I just want you to have more information about who we are because your closing in 30 days is dependent solely on making sure the lender can close it. So if you have five or six other letters there, I just want to make sure we put our best foot forward. So that's the warm fuzzy call. Every agent I've ever spoken to that I do that warm fuzzy with, they say, no other lender called me. You were extremely proactive. They text message sometimes the buyer's agent and said, I can't believe the lender called me first. That is called the warm fuzzy call. If you make that, I'm here to tell you, we've won 83% of our multiple offers here in Houston. Not 83% in Austin and Dallas, but 83% in Houston. <laughs> I think if we were up to 20, 30 offers on every deal, I don't think that 83% would hold, hold suit. But that's, what, that's where we're at with multiple offers here in Houston. And I think a lot of it has to do with that warm fuzzy call. I, I love it. I, I know it does. I mean, I have done a lot of masterminds over the last 30 days, six weeks. I've been on a few clubhouse sessions where this is a topic and it, it is surprising how few lenders are calling. Like if you do that one fuzzy call, you're possibly, probably the only one. Yeah. And at most there might be one or two others. And then if you're a mortgage coach, you've got good reviews. You know, you, you are a baller. Yeah. If you're a mortgage coach, your borrower is clear and confident about what this home means to them because you've delivered options. If if there is an appraisal gap, they've been proactively educated around what are what are your alternatives? If there's a $20,000 appraisal gap, what does that mean to you? So be a mortgage coach, make the warm fuzzy call. Michael, you killed it, brother. It was great catching up with you and thank hey, you man. for bringing back your value to the mortgage coach community. Appreciate it, man. All right. Hey, take care, everybody. If you got value, give us a like, share this with your mortgage friends. And uh, thanks again, Michael.